Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today it's time for us to finally review Ghostbusters the video game remastered on the Nintendo Switch. This review was originally written by the ever-wonderful Gavin Lane, and has been adapted for video by me. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling, let's dive right into things. <laughs> Games based on movie licenses have, on the whole, a bad reputation, but the idea that they're universally rubbish is simply untrue. There are plenty of examples of movie-based games that range from pretty good to excellent. Ghostbusters the video game fell somewhere between the two when it launched ten years ago. Ten years ago, my god. Exceeding low expectations with its mechanical competence and high level of authenticity. Now it's back on Switch with remastered tagged on the title, but how does it hold up after an entire blooming decade. Well, the first thing to get out of the way is that this is a remaster in the very, very loosest sense of the word, beyond the increased resolution, which is something you'll notice less on Switch compared to the 4K capable consoles, there's very little here that doesn't sync with our memories of the PC version. Textures may have been touched up, but there's no extra content, indeed the multiplayer modes from previous console versions have been removed, although they may be reworked and patched in at a later date, we really don't know, and we were hard pressed to find any thing that earns the game its new tagline. A static screen inserted during the intro dedicated to Harold Ramis is touching, but hardly qualifies. The option to remap buttons is welcome, the lack of gyro controls less so. It's possible they'd have made the game a little too easy, but there's really no excuse for their absence, especially in a game that has the gall to call itself a remaster. Bare Bones barely covers it. It's got more in common with one of those classic album reissues. Apparently the tracks have been digitally scrubbed and started up using the latest techniques for unsurpassed audio quality, but unless you're doing a side-by-side -side comparison with your original copy of the White Album, you're unlikely to notice any difference whatsoever. Ghostbusters the Video Game Remastered is basically that. If you don't already own it, there's a great game waiting for you, now in portable form as well, but you probably don't need to buy it again if it's already sitting on your shelf and you got your system set up. There are no new liner notes or fancy packaging on offer here. What you do get, however, is a very solid port of the best Ghostbusters game ever made. Nomenclature aside, Saber Interactive has done a good job of bringing the now defunct Terminal Realities original to the Switch, with a rock solid frame rate and generally great presentation. The original game looked nice already with some lovely lighting and detail, and this is all still very true. You shouldn't go in expecting bleeding edge visuals, suffice to say hair technology has come a long way in the past 10 years, but Terminal Reality did more than enough to evoke the movie beautifully, and that work holds up even on the Switch. Whilst this game is the same game that released on PS3, Xbox 360, and PC in 2009, it also came out on Wii in a system-exclusive adventure with added pointer controls and reworked cartoony-style visuals. We enjoyed the Wii iteration, but there's something special about having the quote-unquote proper Ghostbusters on screen. For one thing, the voice work marries with the more realistic visuals far better. We recall a general feeling at the time of release that Bill Murray in particular was giving a bit of a phoned-in performance, but playing it again, everyone sounds on fine form to us. Once you get through a whole heap of company logos, the game sets the scene a couple of years after the highly underrated, we reckon, Ghostbusters 2 with the guys still in business keeping the good folk of New York City spooks, spectre, and ghost free. With plans to franchise the whole bust-in business, new staff are required, and that's where you come in. As the rookie, you're a guinea pig for a host of new, unlicensed equipment as the game revisits areas, ghosts, and other characters from the original two films. Sigourney Weaver and Rick Moranis are the only notable cast members missing in this reunion, and Alyssa Milano's bland love interest for Venkman highlights the former's absence. Virtually everyone else you could want is present and correct, and this really does feel like a genuine continuation of the story and characters from the films. The script and story, penned by Aykroyd and Ramis and incorporating elements from unused sequel ideas, works perfectly in the context of a fun nostalgia 
nostalgia trip brimming with references for fans to enjoy. As a film, it would arguably feel too derivative and fan y but as a game, it ties in a bunch of lore elements and absolutely nails the look and feel you remember, giving you the opportunity to bust alongside the boys just like you always wanted to. The game excels in making the act of busting ghosts satisfying and appropriately tough, draining ghosts' PK energy with a proton beam before lassoing, slamming and wrangling them into a trap feels suitably ghostbustery, which is just what you want. Pulling your goggles down with X enables you to scan ghosts and your environment, unlocking them in your spirit guide and giving the world more texture if you want it. Your over-the-shoulder view puts the iconic proton pack and associated ghost-busting paraphernalia on screen most of the time, adding to the richness of the world even when the environments themselves might be a little bit bland. The pack's flashing gauges and meters indicate your health, when it needs venting, and which of the various modes you're in. Purchasable upgrades unlock along the way which improve your beam accuracy and open up a variety of gameplay options whilst remaining suitably authentic to the source material. Mechanically, there's nothing revolutionary going on, but gameplay feels remarkably solid, and all the visual and audio elements you know and love help keep things ticking along nicely during the occasional lull. Your proton beam is appropriately chaotic to wield, and destroying things nets you cash for upgrades. <laughs> because of course it does. You'll quickly start strategizing to deal with threats in a certain order, and you'll need to keep an eye on Egon, Ray, Winston, and Peter as well. Ignore their calls for help, and there'll be no one to revive you when you take a tumble. The game goes out of its way to play on your affection and memories from the films, and it works nearly all the time. Elmer Bernstein's oddball, jaunty soundtrack from the first film is used on heavy rotation, and by the end you'll have heard the same cues repeated an awful lot. It works wonders in providing that authentic feel, though a few tracks from the sequel wouldn't have gone amiss. Still, as the name suggests, Ghostbusters the video game sets out to deliver everything you loved about the films in video game form, and it succeeds in doing so better than anyone could have reasonably expected. If you played and enjoyed the Wii version, for our money it's worth revisiting it in its realistic guise a decade on, especially if you know your magical paths to fortune and power from your Tobin's spirit guide. For owners of the non-remastered version on other platforms though, this is a tougher sell even given the portability inherent in the Switch version. The lack of multiplayer, though it's supposedly coming, is a disappointment and gyro controls really should have been included, but for anyone who missed the game the first time around, this is a fine way to catch up and get in the mood for next year's film. Enjoyment of Ghostbusters the video game remastered depends almost entirely on your affection for the films. We love them, but if you don't, then knock at least one point off the score you're about to see, and perhaps take a long hard look in the mirror. <laughs> For the rest of us, this is a wonderful form of time travel. It has absolutely no business calling itself a remaster and is best approached as a straight port of the ten-year-old game, but it's a fine one. Mechanically speaking, there's nothing you haven't seen elsewhere, but it's a good-looking, fun third-person romp dripping in slimy nostalgia, and the chance to spend some time in the company of these old friends, some of them dearly departed, is too good to pass up if you've ever strapped on your old school backpack and gone out to catch some ghosts in the garden. Wowzers trousers, it's only time for Alex's personal viewpoint again, yes! Ah, oh, well, I mean, admittedly, this this is a game I never actually played back in the day. I always, always wanted to, and I, I love the look of it, and I was really envious of the people that got to play it, but it was just, I don't know whether it's just, when did it come out? 2009? 2009. I, I'm not sure I would have really been working, certainly not working enough to be able to just buy any game I wanted, but yeah, I'm guessing it was just another game on the list of games I really wanted to play, and sadly never got around to. But thankfully now, I only blooming have, haven't I? And you know what? Even though it's definitely a 10-year-old game and there's definitely some clunk going on, honestly, it's 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 really good. I really enjoyed myself with it. It's um I, I think even to a degree the the old visuals kind of help in a way, you know, everything's a little bit sort of grimy, it was that era when every game had to be really quite dark overall, and all the textures, you know, were a little bit sort of grimy and, you know, mixes of greys and browns, and that works really well in the Ghostbusters context, because, you know, they're in New York City, it's realistic, and so it almost kind of adds to the experience, I, I mean, I don't know, maybe that's just me and my weird brain. Gav is 100% right when he's, when he's talking about the, um, um, 
the, the fact that they're calling it a remaster like <laughs> mate it's it's the same game as before they've just ported it it's just you know running at a high resolution but even so you know just just out now as a game it's it's two thumbs up from me there was one thing that got slightly under my skin and it, oh, it's 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 just it's so insignificant but it did kind of annoy me um during some of the cutscenes, i don't know whether it's due to you know queuing issues or the the port itself but the audio doesn't always match up exactly with the um, with what's happening on screen, and you know, sort of action on screen and stuff like that. That that seems to me mesh up pretty well. I think generally we're more forgiving as just humans with that kind of stuff, but lip syncing it, it can be a little bit out at times, and it's only a very small amount. And I imagine most people won't even notice it. But um, you know, obviously working in video and stuff like that, I'm quite sensitive to that, and ah, it's out of sync. We've seen this on a couple of remasters in the past, like um, certainly Banjo-Tooie is one of the worst ones. The intro cutscene is completely broken, basically. Um, completely out of sync, everything. But, you know, it's it's not a big deal. It's the biggest complaint I have. And that is, that is that's probably pretty indicative of a damn good game.